when you are an owner of a team or a team president, and I am, in my early years, I was guilty of this, where I would take the microphone and I would say things that uh, maybe were not perfectly thought out. I was far more interested in getting a message out that I wanted to get out with reckless disregard toward how it would be received by anyone, but I needed to get the message out. Over the years, with more media training, you, more experience, you get better, more comfortable in front of a microphone, and it leads to this where you can do a show and talk for 45 minutes, and here we are, 734 episodes in, not canceled yet, still able to have my mouth behind my brain so I know exactly what I'm saying before I say it, very calculating and just when you have a microphone, you have a responsibility. When you run a team, you have a responsibility. The Baltimore Orioles are a team that is led by Peter Angelos, who bought the team in 1992 in an auction from Eli Jacobs in a bankruptcy auction. Little known fact here, he bought the team for 173. He outbid Jeffrey Loria, who was gonna buy the team for 172. Think about how everyone's lives would be different if that had happened. Peter Angelos now is not running the team even though people say he is, he's not. Hasn't been to owner's meetings in forever, is not doing well. His sons are involved in running the team. I've known them for 20 years, more. 03, 13, 23, 30 years, oh my God, that's pretty crazy. And uh, there's a lot of fighting going on. The Angeloses are fighters. He made his money in, as a litigator, asbestos litigation in various other places. His two sons are suing each other over control of the Orioles. They're involving their mother. There's a network they own called Masson, which is involved in litigation with the Nationals. It's been going on for a decade. There are so many problems in Baltimore that the advice given to the Angelo sons is, hey, don't talk to the media. And so they don't. Until yesterday, John Angelos went to a charity event on Martin Luther King Day and the media was allowed. He had not been in front of the media in four years. A member of the Baltimore media, a guy who writes for The Atlantic, I think his name is Dan Conley, Coca, got into a conversation with John Angelos, took the microphone, asked him a bunch of questions and John Angelos gave an answer that can only come from someone who hasn't met the media in four years and has no idea what to say. And I watched him, literally watched him melt during this Q&A. So let me give you the background. John Angelos is being sued by his brother, Louis. John Angelos is on the same side as his mother, Georgia. John Angelos is not very good with the media and with the microphone. And so a question was asked very simply, which is, what is the future of the Orioles? Tell me. And his answer, and I'm basically giving you a summary, but his answer was, it's Martin Luther King Day. Your question is inappropriate. I will not answer your question. I don't recognize your question. And the reason I don't is because you're missing the point of the importance of Martin Luther King Day. Whoever briefed John Angelos and said that it would be okay to use Martin Luther King Jr. as a shield was giving him very bad advice. When you are an owner of a team or even a president and you are in public, that means that you are subject when the media is where you are. You can do public events where no media is allowed, just photographers. But if you do events where you have said the media can be there and the media can ask questions, you've gotta be ready to answer questions on any subject. And if you're the Orioles, the subject of the sale of the team, the lawsuit that's going on when you're suing, when you're being sued by your own brother, the, the fact that there's been litigation over your TV network, the fact that your team has stunk for so many years, if you think that's not going to come up or you're not ready for it to come up, then you, have not been trained properly, or you simply are not good at what you do. So John Angelos got into it. 
And the real problem is he did what kids do when they're backed into a corner. And it's what you tell owners to never do. Don't make a promise that you don't want to keep. John Angelos in front of everybody with the cameras rolling and the microphones hot told this writer, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to invite you in the next couple of weeks. You're going to come to my office and I'm going to go through the financials of our team. You're going to see everything. And then you're going to understand how it is the Orioles manage. I tried that once. Go back, see if it's even, there was a reporter named Doug Hanks with the Miami Herald, invited him in when we were, there was a leak from Deadspin of our financials that showed that we were profitable, but it didn't give the whole picture. It was completely ridiculous. And I thought the best way to handle it after consulting with PR people was to allow the Miami Herald to look at our books and then write an article. And I forgot to understand the most important rule of team ownership. It's like Fight Club, rule number one of team ownership. Your local papers and fans will not give you the benefit of a doubt. Rule number two of team ownership. They only care about winning and not whether you lose money. They only care about winning on the field. Rule number three of team ownership. Don't try to explain to people finance because either they're not gonna get it, they don't wanna get it, or they're gonna think that you are doing something untoward by hiding money here, left, right, or center. So John Angelos, with his dad unable to listen or correct him, offers to do the same thing that I offered so many years ago, and it's gonna be a disaster. Yes, the Orioles are not a profitable team, according to their books. However, there is a huge amount that he will not show this writer that has to do with the TV network that they own. And the profit from the TV network very much is funding the operation of the team. The payroll of the Orioles has been so low for so long that it's going to be very hard to get any sort of accommodation from the media, any sort of sympathy from your fan base. So it is a straight losing proposition. When you go into a battle that you know you can't win, is it not better not to fight? Or do you fight on principle knowing that you better wear an extra heavy set of armored skivvies? What is the right choice in business? The right choice is pretty simple in my mind. The right choice is you only fight the fights worth fighting. You cannot fight with your financials. It's not going to work. John Angelos came off as being petty. He came off as being unprepared. He came off as being combative. All of the things, that's like the holy trinity of what not to do when you are in the front office of a team meeting the media. He hit them all. Hook, line, and sinker. That'll do it. You want to know why the Orioles and the Nationals aren't selling? Because Mass and their network, the fight is still going on between the Nationals and the Orioles. So the bidders can't figure out what they're getting or what they're owed or what the numbers are. Ridiculous.